Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my brothers and sisters we promised that we would speak about how to protect ourselves from those who intend to harm us through black magic through the evil eye the evil eye sometimes can happen even unintentionally but to be protected from the evil eye and black magic and the jinn kind and the effect of the jinn kind so i had promised that we would speak about that alhamdulillah and so therefore this evening i'm going to address that matter look how serious are you to be protected from all of that it is happening across the globe it's happening a lot there are so many people that are affected by it there is a lot that uh, is happening we do believe it exists but we don't blame it uh when any when every anything and everything happens and we don't uh, you know fall for the idea that oh someone did something for you at every small issue but sometimes when it is uh, yes when it is diagnosed by those who are qualified and remember a person called a raqi is the one who does ruqya ruqya means someone who reads some quran and some sunnah duas Uh, supplications they read verses of the Quran and supplications they may blow on you they may give you some water to drink they may tell you to uh, fulfill your salah in a proper way etc they might uh, tell you to read certain verses of the Quran based on the sunnah uh, they might give you some uh, honey raw honey or tell you to have it they might speak about the black seed they might speak about uh, perhaps zamzam they might speak about uh, a few other things the ajwa dates they might speak about olive oil they might speak about uh, figs or a few things like that uh, all of that is proper it's part of the sunnah it's the teaching of the sunnah uh, sometimes they people who perhaps don't know might tell you to do other things that are not revealed by allah and not taught to us by the prophet sallallahu uh, it 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 depends what exactly they are telling you and if if it gets to the level of shirk where they are asking you to associate partners with allah to call out to something besides allah or to believe that there is um a cure besides allah etc which is happening in cases then we need to be very very careful because one is the iman that we have at stake and the other is this issue that we're trying to deal with which is the effect of uh magic black magic uh as well as the uh, evil eye and the mas shaytani sometimes the effect of the jinn and shaytan but what's the best thing is protect yourself before it is too late protect yourself always before it is too late when you protect yourself you create and a metal armor around you nothing can harm you if death is written for you it will come anything besides that is not going to happen so you don't have to worry now the first thing you need to know is try your best to have a good relation with allah with your maker with god almighty have a good relation with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fulfilling obligations and by abstaining from prohibitions as best as possible a lot of people who intoxicate themselves a lot Uh, and who happen to when i say a lot doesn't make a little bit permissible anyway but i'm saying those who begin to hallucinate etc you know they get affected by jinn kind and shaitan etc and together with the psychological problem there happens to be another problem that compounds it so be careful sometimes when we transgress against allah i know of people who actually uh, don't uh, make wudu they don't wash themselves they don't uh, have a bath the ghusl uh, some people because they've spent a lot of money doing up their hair they don't wash it for a few days or a few weeks and thereby they they're living in an in a condition without ghusl without having had a bath which is not a good condition to live in at all i know people who uh, use nail polish and they also don't uh, thereafter do wudu and even they don't even pray because they say look this was so many hundred dollars and you know what am i going to pray for i know people who put a lot of makeup like about so many layers of it uh, they spend thousands of dollars on makeup and 
Uh, thereafter, they, they decide, I'm not going to pray anymore, I'm not going to do ghusl anymore, and I'm not going to do wudu until I wash this off. So they leave it either for the whole day or sometimes for a few days. I've had people confide in me and say, well, I've had this makeup on for three days. And I'm like, what? So they wouldn't read salah. Now, if you don't, if you don't want to connect yourself with Allah, then forget about it. You're, you're prone to everything else. You know, it's like an antivirus on your phone or an antivirus on your computer. If you're not interested in it, then you're open to hacking, attacking, etc. You don't want to have a difficult password, uh, a, a two or three uh, a step verification. It's important to do these things. So if we realize this regarding our phones and regarding our laptops and computers, what about us as humankind who are far more sophisticated than this? So uh, I'm not saying bad about uh, the things I just spoke about, like makeup and doing your hair, but you need to know uh, it must be done within the pleasure of the Almighty. That's what I'm saying. So please understand this. Uh, there are people who don't pray simply because they th they say, you know, I'm 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 at a mall. I'm going shopping, and and that's it. You know, I I'll pray when I come back. I'll do the tarawih, and sometimes they just miss it. Please try and develop your relationship with Allah, because I know people who, I know people who uh, uh, have told me that you know we went to a black magician. When we're talking of a black, ma well, let's not call him a black magician because it's got nothing to do with the color black. Black magic has got nothing to do with the color. Uh, it's, it's just a certain type of magic. But uh, it actually occurs anywhere in the world. It's happening all over, including wherever. I don't want to mention countries because it's irrelevant. But I know of people who've been to these type of magicians or these type of fortune tellers and these type of, um, you know, people who will cast spells for you. Astaghfirullah, like I said before, it's prohibited to do that completely, you lose your faith. But some people have come back to me and said, you know, we tried to cast a spell on some su such and such a person. And that, that person casting a spell said, whoa, this person you're trying to cast a spell on is so strong that if you were to cast a spell on them, it will rebound on you. What was the strength? The strength was... Um, that of dua, that of closeness to Allah, nothing can harm you. So uh, this is why we say develop your, your connection with Allah. Every morning and evening you have to set aside 10 to 15 minutes to read the following. Ayatul Kursi three times. The last three surahs of the Quran three times each. Three times. أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق three times that's the minimum you can also read لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير one hundred times through the day so the first ones I pause for a moment because I want to make a small clip out of that so that we know what to read إن um, the first ones I said Ayatul Kursi thrice That's verses in Surah Al-Baqarah right? Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la noom Read the meaning of it It's powerful You can google it Meaning of Ayatul Kursi And you will find it right? You must read it thrice in the morning That is after Salatul Fajr After the morning prayer Just before, break, just before uh, sunrise and uh, if you've delayed for some reason, do it at any time there. As soon as you wake up and you, you know, you've prayed and, and you read it. Some people, if they're not praying, women sometimes during the time of the month where they're given uh, a, a leeway regarding the prayer, they can do it as soon as they wake up in the morning. You know, you have to read it. You have to read it with the intention of dua. Don't say, these are verses of the Quran, I'm not allowed to read. Allowed to read. No, you are allowed. This is protection. And these are duas. This is powerful. In fact, you can be more affected during those days of the month than you would any other time during the month. So be careful. It's more important to read it morning and evening during those days. So Ayatul Kursi, you've read it thrice. Then Qul Hu Wallahu Ahad, thrice, that dua, meaning that surah as a dua. Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falak, you're seeking protection in Allah from the devil. Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Nas, so thrice each. Thrice each. You can read Ayatul Kursi, the one, the one, the one. So that's one set. You can do another set and the third set. Or you can read three Ayatul Kursis, three times Qul Hu Allahu Ahad, three times Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falaq, three times Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Nas. That's also okay. So you can read it set by set or three, three, three. That's fine. Either way is okay. Then the prayer, 
بسم الله in the name of Allah الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض with whose name nothing on earth uh, can ever harm nothing on earth can harm ولا في السماء no on no in the skies nothing in the skies nor on earth can ever harm if I've taken the name of Allah and I'm just taking the name of Allah right وهو السميع العليم he is all hearing all knowing that prayer thrice how short is it very short few a sentence then أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق. I seek refuge in Allah, uh, in all the names of Allah, or all the words. Sorry, the words of Allah, uh, the words, the signs of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, from all the evil that He has ever created. You're seeking the protection in the words of Allah, in the, in, in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, from all the evil that He has created. That thrice. This is beautiful, beautiful. It will protect you from morning to evening. And when you read it in the evening, it protects you all night. Every day, every night, don't forget it. It's worth spending the 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening to protect yourself from everything throughout the day, throughout the night. So protect yourself. Prevention is better than cure. Remember that. My brothers and sisters, what I'm saying today is very serious. So please take it seriously. I read it every single day. And every single night, and if some for some reason you slip up or you're delayed, read it as soon as you remember. Take your time, don't worry. And then after every prayer, try and read it once. Read Ayatul Kursi once. Once, after every prayer. So that's five times a day. Once. Once doesn't take you more than 35 seconds to a minute. Right? Uh, you want to add to it the... Last two surahs of the Quran, it's also fine, it's permissible, you can do that, alhamdulillah. Uh, a few other surahs and uh, whatever else you want to read as dua, you can do the adhkar after salah. There are some beautiful dhikr to read, it can be a topic of one of our other sessions. But my brothers and sisters, remember, if you are not prepared to worry about your protection, you're going to cry one day when you are affected. You know, just like the computers, when they're affected with these viruses, some of them, you've got to throw them away after that. I promise you with us, when you're affected by black magic and, and jinn and, and ayn and hasad and all those things, meaning jealousy and envy and the evil eye and all these things, it varies in the type of effect it has on the person based on their closeness to Allah or not. Another very important factor. Listen to me. When you have sinned, immediately repent from, uh, from Allah, meaning repent with Allah from whatever you've done, right? Repent immediately. Don't leave that sin and become excited with it. It, it. it lowers your guard. It's like a virus that's coming in your system. It's going to grow. We all sometimes do things that we're not happy with. We have certain weaknesses. Some are major, some are minor. May Allah protect all of us, right? Uh, but when you committed a sin, Astaghfirullah, may Allah forgive me. May Allah grant me. Oh Allah, that was my weakness. I really, it's a bad thing I did. I don't want to do it again. And so on. Make peace with Allah immediately. Don't leave that sin for... Uh, you know, until you commit it again and again, and you're happy with it, excited, you've dropped your guard. Shaitan will come and attack. You start finding you have bad dreams. You dream of snakes and nightmares, and you, you you can't sleep, and you have headaches, migraines that you cannot explain, and so much more. These are these could be signs of some effect of a jinn or some form of a bad effect. Remember this. So what I've said today is very serious. I'm going to post this on YouTube on my channel. You can search for the channel. Uh, at the moment, we have approximately 350,000 followers on YouTube. Uh, you know, we, uh, the reason I'm saying this is so you know which is the proper legitimate channel. As far as I know, it is a verified channel if you know how to check for that on YouTube. Um, so may Allah grant us all protection. So we spoke about this the last time, how prohibited it is to do this to someone. Today we're talking about how to protect ourselves from this on a daily basis. Now, what do you do if you are affected? And why do some people need to go to Araqi? Sometimes people go to, it's best to do your Ruqya on your own. The, what I've told you to read and a few other things you could read, verses of the Quran, etc. Going to Araqi is someone who can do Ruqya. What I just told you now is called Ruqya to protect yourself. So uh, we are protecting ourselves, right? But if you have been affected, you may uh, go to someone who's, who can help you. Uh, it's the next level. It's permissible, not highly encouraged, but permissible. There is a narration of the Prophet ﷺ that shows that it's not highly encouraged, but it is permissible, right? So you go to someone who can read the Quran, who can actually 
uh, let you know. Sometimes they may, through the symptoms, tell you that yes, there is some form of an effect, but they can never ever tell you who did it. If they tell you who did it, they are lying. And unfortunately, if they think they're telling the truth, they have got that news from the jinn kind themselves. And that itself is prohibited. The jinn is always lying, always lying. You know, they'll tell you a few truths, one truth and 99 lies. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So remember what I'm saying. Uh, if you're going to Iraqi, make sure they're legitimate. Make sure what they tell you is okay. Uh, they're not supposed to tell you anything silly that doesn't make complete sense to your mind. Uh, they're not supposed to be telling you to undress. They're not stuff. I've heard that you know, uh, not too long ago. Someone sent me an email and said they went to Iraqi. Iraqi says you've got to undress and just remain in your underclothes. I mean, how? Uh, how on earth? The Raqi himself is a jinn. He's a shaitan. Come on. You're supposed to say, Oh, the Billah from, from that Raqi. He's not a Raqi. He's a, he, he's, he's a Taqi. Man. <laughs> so, so you need to use your common logic and your sense. You know, he's not supposed to hold you and rub you and feel you and all that. No, it shouldn't happen. Uh, may Allah protect us all. Uh, yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, some, some might want to check your pulse and so on. Uh, it depends. Uh, let's talk about what is the Sunnah. Okay. So the Prophet ﷺ has taught this to us and uh, indeed it is something extremely beneficial. It's extremely beneficial to be able to protect yourself and even you can seek help if you're affected. And sometimes you're already affected and what would happen is uh, you, need to, you need to make sure that, uh, well, if you cannot cure yourself, the cure happens by constantly reading this. If you read Surah Al-Baqarah, the entire Surah, which is, takes quite long, it will protect your home from the devils even entering it. Sometimes some people leave it playing in the background. It, may, it does have a slight impact, a positive impact, but it's, uh, Quran is not for a background noise or a sound. It's not for a background, background thing. It's supposed to be the main thing. And... Um, at least if one person's listening to it, then it's okay, even if the rest are not. You know, you could be busy in the kitchen and the Quran is playing, but as long as your mind is partly there and someone's listening to it at least a little bit, uh, that, that that's permissible. But the proper etiquette of the Quran is, you know what, when it's being recited, you listen to it. If it's being played via, via a cassette or via a DVD or from online and so on, there is permissibility of it playing, yes, while you're cooking, while you're doing something else. Um, it's a lesser degree than when it's being recited live, okay? But... Uh, what I am saying, Surah Al-Baqarah, very powerful. It will help you as well. Read the entire Surah at some stage, and especially when you've been affected in a big way already. Uh, but what I've told you will help you from not being, meaning from, from the effect itself. Uh, you won't be if affected from the beginning. One last point that's come to my mind, and uh, that is, don't be a show-off. Uh, some people might think you're a show off when you're not a show off. But if you're a show off, showing everything off, especially your kids, you show them on WhatsApp yourself. You show yourself this way and that way, and you know whatever. And this is what I've got, and that's what I do. And and you know you show your body and your shape and your skin and how it is and so on. purposely, like purposely. Uh, that that may be a secondary thing. People notice it. Mashallah, tabarakallah. It's good, fair and good. What I mean is that that's there. But when you're showing it purposely. And you're displaying it and show off and you know, look at what I have. Expect to be damaged by something of these things we spoke about today. Did you hear what I said? Expect it. It's a matter of time before it comes to you. You're asking for it. You're asking for trouble. The minute the evil eye clocks in, sometimes it takes a while before it actually damages you, gets you. It can get your health. It can get your everything. It can get your wealth. It can take you to your grave. Okay, Superst The evil eye, the hadith says it's true. It can even get you to your grave. You know, it can destroy a lot. It's there. It happens. Protect yourself from it. So be careful, my brothers, my sisters. You don't have to show off everything you have. It's a ni'mah of Allah. There is a lot that I could tell you, but I don't because sometimes I don't want to say these things. A lot of people want to know more about me. They want to know more about my personal life and more about this. Sometimes I don't want to say it. Uh, uh, sometimes it's not showing off, but maybe people want to exchange notes, see how we can benefit. Yeah. But sometimes it becomes showing off and... Uh, you know and Allah knows that you're showing off. Don't do that. A lot of people have this habit. you know. And this is why those people who are presenting certain things like clothing and so on, be careful. Uh, make sure you read your Muawidat. Sometimes you, you're dressed in a proper, nice way, appropriate way. And you know, you, you're trying to market a certain product. Fair enough. But please bear in mind to read all this stuff that I've told you to read today.
morning and evening, every day, every, there's no night that you don't, there's no morning that you don't. Whether you're reading salah or not becomes a secondary factor. You have to fulfill and read what I'm telling you to read. Then you'll protect yourself. This was the session I promised you. It's a little bit longer. The session is a bit long, but inshallah, I'm going to post it. And uh, follow-up questions, inshallah, I will always take those follow-up questions. You can post your questions at the bottom of my YouTube link, inshallah. Sometimes when I have a moment, I do go down the YouTube comments. So you may post that on Mufti Mink, uh, on the channel that we have, uh, the verified channel, inshallah. My brothers and sisters, I hope I've said that which is uh, sufficient for now. And I pray that Allah grant us all cure and give us all uh, protection. Very importantly, protection. That's protection. Uh, remember, if you're not going to protect yourself, you're the only one to blame. If you're not want to develop, you're not wanting to develop your relationship with Allah, you're the only one to blame. May Allah bless you all, love you all for the sake of Allah. Uh, we're here simply for the sake of Allah, trying to benefit each other. And the, the reason why I talk to you is because I want to get Jannah. And I want to earn as many rewards as I can before I die, inshallah. So that's why we're here to teach. Because the Prophet ﷺ says, Ballihu anni wa law ayah. Even if it's one verse, just convey it. You convey it and inshallah you get a free reward. It keeps clocking. So we want that to clock, inshallah. My brothers and sisters, here we are. Modesty has just written that dua. Ayatul Kursi thrice, the Quls uh, thrice. La ilaha illallahu wahdahu, la sharika lahu, lahu al-mulku, wa lahu al-hamdu. Yuhyi wa yumitu wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir 100 times through the day. That, the Prophet Sallallahu says, whoever reads that, so many things happen to them, so many things. And one of them is, kana lahu hirzan min ash-shaytan, like, like, like he becomes totally protected from the devil, you know, complete, like a metal armor around you. And that's what I say. I've uh, enjoyed speaking to you. I've tried to look at some of these comments. This video was initially a, an Instagram live video from Mufti Menk official. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you guys Jannatul Firdaus. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.